this one does. Um, and in that one, I explain why I've been away for several weeks. Uh, brief explanation anyway. I don't, I don't go too, too in-depth, but if you haven't seen that one, go ahead and watch that if you want to figure out why I've been away. Um, but, uh, so this is going to be the last episode of the Royals, and the reason being is that the new version of Rogue Tech has dropped, and it invalidates all the old saves. So I'm going to end the three series, the Inheritance, the Royals, and the Duelist. So this will be the ap last episode of the Royals. Inheritance uh, aired the other day, and the Duelist will be the last one that I post. So, for this particular episode, um, I wanted to do a challenge, make it a little bit more difficult than normal. So, uh, in order to get to where that was going to happen, I had to go through a couple of financial reports to get the mechs back that we have. And in order to do that, I had to take a, um, a one and a half skull, um, I think it was one and a half, might have been two skull base defense mission. And we ended up facing four lances of clans clan units. Uh, first time I ex actually encountered the Cephalus in a mission, and there was two of them. Um, and they were doing their jobs, running forward and tagging everything, which was friggin' annoying. Anyway, um, we ended up doing well. We, we won the mission, but the Sentinel lost its arm with the Ultra 2. So, if we go into the Sentinel and have a quick look, I decided to do some changes to it. And what I did was... Um, I ended up putting the light rotary rifle in the arm instead of the Ultra 2. Uh, the ammo, the periphery ammo in the case has to be in the arm uh, simply because um, the periphery ammo has to be in the same location as whatever um, weapon it's using, like the light rotary rifle in this instance. And I also dropped some peel and stick armor on because we had some weight left over. So I dropped that in. So that, with that said and that done... Um, we decided to go ahead and take this uh, Three Skull um, escort mission. So I figured it's, it should be good. I mean, we, we, we can only drop six units, right? So we should be encounter three Diamond Shark units. The first one will be guarding the base that we have to go and start the convoy at. The second one we'll encounter on the way to the dropping them off. And then the third one we will get when um, we set them to go. And, yeah, so, you know, I decided on, like, like 418 salvage might as well because I mean, it doesn't really matter because of the last series, right? And then I think we got... Oh, yeah, I also lost the Zoria. It went down in the, in that, in the fight. Um, but I did have another piece, so I was able to put it back together. And I went with the mortar version again because I think we, des we decided we were going to try that out. I wasn't happy with it in the last fight um, that I did offline. But I decided to put that one back together because I don't think I, I I actually played with it with you guys seeing it. I can't remember. Maybe I did. Command interface so initiated. when we drop in here, I, at first I didn't recognize this map because we're on the opposite side of where, from where you normally drop in and I was like, what? Like, where the hell do we have to go to? Like I, I couldn't figure out originally, initially where we had to drop stuff off to. It's just down the hill here and like, oh yeah, now I remember. You normally start off, start off on this side, behind the hill here, and I I'm trying to figure out where the enemy is. So the we could we could drop anywhere over there, but I think I decide for back here because the enemy is right there, right? And if we drop anywhere else, we we'll be down the hill. They'll be shooting down on us. So I'm like, might as well just try it from this side. We got a lot of cover. There's that big hill in the center there, so if we drop here, hopefully one or two of their mechs will like appear and we can just kill them really quickly. Um, I'm hoping to take as little damage as I possibly can in this first encounter. Obviously, I mean, that's what you want. But if we can, mur like, you know, murder one or two mechs really quickly, um, that would be ultimate here. So I dropped the vehicles down at the back, mechs in the front, and we just drop down. Enemy contact right away. And your friend of mine, yes, what do we see? Friggin' toadies. You know how much I hate toadies. I was like, fuck's sake, you know, really? It's gonna take me forever to fucking kill these guys now. I'm thinking, uh, at this point I'm thinking, you know, we're gonna be burning a lot of, uh, there's two, two sets of them. The salamanders and the toads. And I'm like, 
It's good. We're gonna, I, I got a lot of mechs with ammo here. I'm like, I'm gonna burn through so much ammo to kill these guys. Chance to hit us low on turn one here. I mean, it's, it's low consistently through this whole thing, so I'm like, keep the uh, rotary rifle at two. Decide to take a couple pot shots at this guy. 11 points, and I'm like, yeah, it's just gonna be regenerated. What's the point? Right? Got, they got the cheat armor, so why not? And I'm still arguing against that. It's like... So, hard gel is technically as hard as regular armor, but what it does is it fills the hole where the armor took a hit, right? It's designed to fill cracks, not massive holes. So if you're punching the armor with a massive AP round, right, you're either going to hit the outer shell, and if it doesn't Damn penetrate, where is the hard gel going to hey. go? There's nowhere to go. So if it does penetrate, then the hard gel would fill the crack, right? So my argument would be wait till it gets to the internal structure and then, you know, uh, the hard gel oh will, will cover the, the outside with armor again rather than constantly regenerating the armor because you haven't penetrated anything yet. There's no hole for it to fill, right? Anyway, we're going to go after this fire moth because it's, it's friggin' dangerous. ER mediums and AP Goss rifles, this thing's got to go. So this is the guy that's giving us giving himself to his first. We're hoping to kill this mech fast. Now you can see the two mechs in the back. I don't think I've, I've uh, highlighted them yet, but you'll see what's there. They're both pretty dangerous. I think I turn off the AP Goss rifles at this point. I don't want to waste the ammo. I've only got a hundred rounds, right? So I'm like, I don't want to waste my ammo on this. Especially with low chance to hit. I got seven of them, which means I've got like 13 into what, 14 turns of firing. But I have no idea what I'm going to be facing just yet, so I'm better off not firing the low percentage chance to hit right at the very beginning. Ready for orders. Moving the Sentinel off to the flank here. Gonna try the same thing. Shoot the fire moth. At least I think I tried that. Maybe, or I think I turned. Maybe I turn off the uh, LRMs because I don't want to waste the ammo. It's only 4% on the outside. Yeah. Got it. I'm pretty sure I turned the, LRM, turned the LRMs off here. Well, 18's not bad. I got 12 turns, right? I gotta consider that. So I got technically 4 turns of firing here with the LRMs. So do I want to burn it on a low percent chance to hit? Not just, not, not really. Negative damage. Right, Derby. So, these machine guns do fairly well against toadies, but... And then we've got lots of them and lots of ammo, but the problem is, is that it does such little damage, right? That you're plinking it for one, 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 then it just regenerates. What's the, what the hell's the point? Yeah, you, you could argue that you're killing the regeneration of the hard gel, but you're not really... For a handful of points. Anyway, I fired them anyway. Cause fuck them, right? I'm just like, yeah, I just gonna regenerate that. Two points of damage. Be back next turn. Waiting on you, Commander. Now, I can't get a line of sight. I don't think with this guy. I think we dropped the mortar at the back. I think. I gotta watch out with the with this thing. The mortar ammo is so the the the. Uh, LBX-5 is fine because we got lots of, we got 40, 40 rounds of ammo, we got cluster and uh, regular ammo. But we've only got like 12 turns of, 12 turns of full ammo firing and two turns of like four round firing. So I gotta be careful of how much ammo we use here too, right? Go with the airburst that does more damage, spread it out. But there's the Stormcrow back there. LRM-40, SRM-4, Narc Launcher. It's pretty scary. Right, Commander. They damaged the two mechs back there. There's a pack hunter back there as well. I didn't bother to check because I wasn't sure what version of that is, but pack hunters usually carry um, ERPPC. So I had to be careful. I don't think that one does, but I'm pretty sure most pack hunters carry ERPPC. I think what, I think this smaller pack hunter two I think carries a Gauss rifle. Or can carry a Gauss rifle. 
Toadies go before us. I think I'm, I'm, I think at this point I'm thinking, yeah, maybe we can just sneak around them. Like, the thing about these Toadies is they've got area of, like, they've got area control here, right? I'm like, do we really need to, like, kill these guys? We don't. We don't. We don't have to kill them. If we can get past them, right? Just kill the max, get past the toadies, activate the, the convoy, and then just stay ahead of the toadies. We don't have to fight them, right? But they're in they're in area oh god, just damage this thing. This sentinel. This fire moss gotta go. But yeah, the the, the toadies are in good position to, to deny my ability to get past them, right? Like anywhere I unless I can speed past them, you know. I can't do it, right? And like my sentinel is not that you know not that bad with speed, but my waiver is slow, right? So I got to consider that. My other two mechs can get past no problem. I'm here. Just trying to figure out where I can move here, do the most amount of damage to this guy. There. Got to kill this fire okay. mob. He did a fair amount of damage to that sentinel. Can't have that, right? Good chance to hit for this guy. Okay. Opening up some areas. I hear ya. Trying to see if I can get a direct line of sight on him, and I can. On my I think way. we switch up the normal ammo though for the uh, mortar here. Yeah. I don't want to waste too much of the. Um, I don't want to waste too much of the flak ammo in case we get yeah, air, air vehicles later on. I like to keep that. Receiving you. Moving in to pace this guy. I mean, we don't have the best chance to hit, but still. We're going to take it because he's got to go down. He's got a lot of open areas too, right? So better off firing than not firing. Yeah, load him up. Load him up, Bubba. There you go. See ya. Hostile removed. All right. Now we got to decide what the hell we're gonna do here. Are we gonna go after those guys? I'm trying to figure out if I can get down that way. Like the problem is, is I don't think my vehicle, my vehicles can get down there. Just determining whether I need to go across the top or down that side. I don't want to sacrifice myself to go around that way. Thinking about using the AP Goss on these guys too. If I can kill one of them, it's not so bad. But but the amount of damage that I'm going to do, they just regenerate. Like, what's the point, right? I mean, I get a bonus to hit with the AP Goss rifles, but still, it's like the damage is so insignificant. Like all the weapons that you can use against these elementals do so little damage. Especially when they've got hard gel and they just regenerate it. It's like, what? What? Why? You gotta hit him with something big and hard, you know? I'm just moving away. I'm trying to set myself up. Figure out where, gotta figure out where they're gonna move. And then see if I can get past them, you know? And maybe up, maybe I offer up a vehicle as sacrifice or something. Okay, pack hunter's moving out. He's not shooting though. I don't think he's got quite a line on us. I don't think that, that alleyway looks like he can see the Viper. But I don't think it's... I think there's a bit of a hump there that he can't see over. And here comes the Storm Crow. I don't like that. Storm Crow's got to go. He's going to... I mean... The Elementals are in good area denial uh, space. Because as, as we know, they can do good damage. Like, depending on how they're loaded out. You know, they can do good damage against vehicles. They can do good, good damage against mechs. Like, if they climb on them, there's a major issue. These two guys... Um, you'll see how they're loaded out in a second. Trying to decide what my best chance here. We're gonna shoot against this guy. I'm considering offering this vehicle up as a uh, sacrifice for the uh, elementals to see if we can draw them out and kill them. But yeah, see, they got they're in such a good position to stop me from getting around them. This guy goes up the hill. So now I'm thinking, okay, I got a bit of an open opening. So he's got e Inferno SRMs that he was able to use on me. Minimal damage on that hit. Not a lot of damage, so I'm like, okay, that's not so bad. Just trying to determine where I can go here. So if I go down that alleyway, I'm I'm stuck because they can just push push me. But if I go this way, right, one, I got a chance to shoot the Stormcrow, 
I'm like, I, I think I'm far enough away from the elemental here. I'm more worried about them boarding me, right? We got to get on the storm crow, the LRM 40. It's big. It's a big deal, right? So that's what my that's what my thought pattern is here. Is I'm trying to get to the point where I can kill the storm crow fast. I'm gonna drop heat here. There we go. Well, I'm not doing a lot of damage, but I want to drop heat. Oh, we hit his head too, which is nice. I want to drop heat so I can actually speed past the elementals. Because if we stayed hot there, we wouldn't be able to get very far, right? Packhunter is moving into a weird position now. It's in a crossfire situation, so if I go up on top of the hill, he can shoot me. I gotta kind of stay to the left and keep that hill between us. I'm trying to determine now what I'm gonna do here. Let's move. Sentinel's so slow compared to my other max. I gotta really decide how it's gonna be positioned. Right there, you can see it's a waste of time for me to shoot that thing. Stormcrow's gotta go, so I'm thinking I gotta shoot missiles at this guy. Like I can shoot more, but then I'm gonna be overheated, right? I think I decide to shoot anyway, hoping that the large hits. Yeah, I don't want to waste the missiles at this point, I think. I'm really considering what to do here. I can't even remember what I did here. Oh yeah, I fired at the Storm Crow, yeah. Four points. What can I do it's for bad you? when you got like... 30 missiles and only one of them hits at a 20% chance. Try to see how far I can get here. If anything, I mean the Zoria could die by doing this, but if anything, what I'm doing is I'm hopefully offer offering it up as an easier target for the elements and the elementals to go after. Miss with the mortars, but does a little bit of damage. Aye, aye. You can get around. Sentinel's pretty fast here. Thought it was a lot slower, but it's actually pretty fast. Confirm. Going after the Stormcrow. Decided to ignore the elementals at this point, I think. Even the Thunderbolts off. Confirm. Yeah, that was some good hits. Not a lot of damage, but I mean, it yeah, is what it is, that. right? Trying to decide what to do with the Viper. I think it's a uh, move over here and attack situation. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. I'm kind of past the elementals there as well. I think I'm trying to get in to get the best shot I can. I think I run through heat here, though. Yeah, I run through fire here. But I can get the AP gosses on this guy. I mean, this thing's pretty good for heat anyway, right? I think I fire it all, do I? I might. Yeah, I do. Yeah, they both both medium improves it as well, right? So some good damage unloaded there. Stormcrow's got pretty good armor for 55 tons. It's maxed armor, I think. This version, this version, I think, has got 130 on each torso. Yeah, this this kind of perplexed me. He moved past my my uh, Viper to fire at the Wavern. I mean, I understand the Wavern being a threat, but the Wavern's got the most amount of armor. He could have really shredded the Viper if he, if he wanted to, but decided right against forward. it, I guess. I'm trying to see if I can get a back strike on him. Oh, I can't hear. No, sorry, that's the next turn. The next strike, I think. The next turn, I think I look for a back strike. I think I just shoot him with machine guns here. I'm trying to lessen the splash damage on my uh, guy over there. Another head hit. Yeah. As I was saying, machine guns just. Way too many head hits. Like, you can boat machine guns and then just try and target somebody's head. Or just fire in general. Yeah, this is where I notice that these elementals are like flamers. Getting a little toasty, Commander. Hey. Yeah. Things are going to start getting tricky here. So I'm trying to make my way past the elementals. They're, 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 they, they control the battlefield at this point, right? Because they can do serious damage to mechs if they board, so I can't get close enough to them to be able to backstrike the, um, the Stormcrow. But I need to get around them, right? That's what we're working on doing here. Positioning ourselves, killing the Stormcrow, getting around them. We'll deal with the Pack Hunter later. I'm trying to figure out what my jump is, which is like, it's I have an emergency jump, that's it. 
It's like, hey, I need to get up that cliff. Jump. So we're gonna move into here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, punish the storm crow a bit. Really great chances to hit. I just have to decide what I'm doing. I'm gonna go all in. I hope you Seriously good damage, but like I said before, this guy's got max armor for his weight class. So he can hurt. take it, right? Yeah. So now that's where I find out the toadies are now flamers. So both the salamanders are to to and the toadies are flamer units. You. Keep that in mind. Okay. I want to move forward because I, if I move forward enough of these guys to get me, I want to be moving before them next turn. So I'm vigilanced. I'm going to go after the storm crow and try and get a kill on this guy. Doing our best here. Not bad. SRM2 destroyed. Scored a critical hit. Alright, Zoria, what are we doing with you? I hear ya. Once again, it's like I'm kind of offering it up. I'm trying to figure out I mean, I can't fire the mortars at that close range because all my guys are there, right? So I'm looking for a place that the uh, LBX can get a half decent shot at him. I mean, I could drop the mortar on him, but then I'd be damaging everybody. It's worse if we had uh, if we had open components and stuff. It would be way worse, but yeah. So I'm res I'm reserving him because I want to see what I can do here. If I can kill this guy, Moving if I can out. kill the storm crew with this guy, then I can move the Zoria to a different location. I got to turn the medium improves off. I gotta lose some AP gosses here because I'm I'm way overheat, thanks to the uh, the uh, salamander. So we're down to four AP gosses here. So there goes this whole side. And he bailed. Perfect situation. Couldn't have got any better. Commander. Now looking at getting my vehicles past them. Moving forward. I want to distract them with machine guns. So we're going to do that. Even though we get a bonus to hit with, with what we have, it's almost impossible to hit them anyway. I mean, my pilots aren't the best either, too, right? So, so you can see where the Sentinel is. So he's stuck between... A, he can't get past them on this side, right? There's no way. So I got to go the other way. What can I do so that's what we're going to do. We're going to move the, this guy that way. Got it. Drop some mortar rounds on the pack hunter. Because he's really the guy that's stopping us from getting out of here now. And then we're going to move the sentinel around that side as well. I'm here. Going to drop our instability so I can sprint. Max speed. Thinking I'm pretty safe here. Can't remember if I fired this guy. Yeah, 28's not bad. We got two more turns in this area of, of missile fire before we hit four. We might as well give it a shot. This guy'll probably be gone in a turn, turn or so anyway, so this will soften him up. All right, so Smirk goes first because we uh, gave him um, resolve last turn. Double time. Let's go. Good chances to hit. The guy didn't really didn't move last turn, so not exactly sure what he was, why he was posted there. He kind of posted himself up there and just kind of sat in that location for some reason. I guess he was trying to control the uh, the corner of the battlefield, but it didn't really help. Got some good armor stripping on him. Ready for order. Sentinel's getting a chance to get up here and get it, get through on this side. Just trying to decide where to go, where the toadies aren't uh, close enough to him. Pretty good. Roger. He's almost out too. With me. I mean, one more move and we're past them. A large hit for once. And massive damage, man. Oh, partial wing system. I didn't realize that before. Short range hit. battle computer. Didn't think the pack hunter had. All right, whatever. And here comes the flamers. A little toasty, but we should be fine as long as we don't fire next turn. 
Yeah, you're fine. What are you talking about? Oh, wait. Maybe you're not. Well, that's a lot of heat. Still not that bad, though. As long as we don't fire next turn, we're fine, right? Let's go. We're past them. Let's get the hell out of here. Be good. Let's kill the pack hunter and get the hell out of here. Zoria should have no problem getting past them. Doesn't get affected by heat, so we're fine. Turn that off. Turn that off. Try for the kill. Much as much as we can get on without overheating. That looked like a critical hit. So who's going next? Oh the pack oh yeah, the pack hunter. But he's got an ER large. Kinda of fortunate it wasn't a PPC, but 55 damage is still pretty good. Light damage, Commander. Commander. PPC is 75, right? The clan PPC. So um, it's better that it's not carrying Copy a PPC. That. I'm gonna blast this guy. I think we drop a lot of heat. Yeah, from the last turn, so we're not that bad. Looking at putting the medium improves on, but I think it's just way too hot. Trying to manage ammo too at the same time, right? Heat and ammo. We got two more fights to go. Firing on top. Good damage. Solid connection, that one. You need we to get around him. Pedal to the metal. Can't remember what we do here. Oh yeah, that's right. We go after these guys. Try to distract them here. A little bit of damage, but not much. There's not like I mean I don't know. I find those elementals are just the only thing negative against the elementals is their movement speed, which to me is a bit ridiculous. But firing everything because I want to kill this guy. There we go. Beautiful. Now we're pretty much out of here. Yeah, they repaired all the damage. Oh shit, now they're on top of me. And they shut me down. I'm generating a lot oh, you're about to be generating a lot more. Second group of elementals just boarded them. <laughs> so, Two the battle armor is actually damaging each other now that they're stuck on them. I've got both of them on him now. If I had gone before them, I may have been able to get a distance, like enough of a, dropped enough heat to be able to get a distance from them to save myself from that, but there's just no way. So I'm like now I'm like trying to figure out what I can do here. So I, all I can do is restart. I was hoping that I could do something else, but Watch no, all I can do is restart. Yes, Commander. They were... The elementals were perfectly positioned, and they had the perfect type of elementals. And I have, I'm trying to figure out now, what do I do? Can I get in close enough to do any damage to them? Can I, I can't shake them off, because I'm st stuck restarting. And now I'm like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> There's nothing we can do, pal. I'm sorry. Even though this gives me a target to the, to the units here, I think I think I, I think I move and try and take a shot at them here. I want to move in to fire all fire my machine guns at them, but that doesn't work. For some reason, it gives you a targeting here, direct, indirect fire targeting. And I, I can, I can't target my guy, so I can't click on him, right? But I can tab, and it, it shows me them, but it won't let me fire because they're on top of my own guy, which is a bit ridiculous. The weird thing though is when they fire their flamers, they damage the other elemental, I hear you. right? So there's two elementals on them, when one elemental unit fires the flamers, it actually barbecues the other elemental unit as well. Got it. Max speed, so they're actually no damaging shooting. each other while they're damaging my guy when they're firing the flamers. Waiting for orders. So I'm like, at this point I'm like, I have to leave them. There's nothing I can do, right? If I decide to stay and help him out, I have to wait until he can somehow restart and short them off. 
But he can't, there's no way to do that because they just keep overheating him, right? And they just fixed all their armor. Are they gonna damage me and themselves? Shut me down again? I'm generating a lot of heat. Wait, I'm improved to confident. I don't know if that's me or them. I think it's them, probably. Yeah. My heat sinks come yeah, well, they're gonna have. You just have to do it, deal with it, buddy. We're, we're, we're out of here. So I'm just Moving gonna activate the uh, convoy at this point because there's nothing I can, what can I do for you. Nothing I can do. I gotta quickly get out of here. Because if those elementals, like if, if I wait, the sooner the sooner they bring that guy down, then the sooner they're onto us. And I would rather be down this hill when they when they get free. Because if we get a really bad okay. lance up ahead here, I don't want them coming up behind me, right? They're pretty. I mean, as much as you can, you know, I, I've called them jokes in the past. That's the perfect scenario for elementals right there, right? I played right into their trap. The AI played that so well, right? It's like, once again, I want to say that sometimes the AI plays the match like you're playing a human player, right? Did they position the pack hunter and the storm crow like a human player would? No, but they definitely use those elementals properly. Like, that, that was textbook elemental right there. They're just going to barbecue them again. Damage each other. Internal structure damaged. Yeah, no, nothing I can do about it, buddy. They penetrated the internals now. Damage Still hasn't bailed out yet, though. The more he hangs on... This is where I find out we're facing an urban mech lance up ahead here. Which was a bit weird, because we're fighting Clan Diamond Shark. So I'm like, shouldn't this be, like, a better unit? But it's just basically standard derbies. Nothing to worry about, really. A couple of them with AC-20s. One of them's got an MRM-30, I think. That guy pretty much sacrificed himself right there. Because he turned his back, right? We can get down and get behind him here, which is what we do. We got a pretty good chance to hit here, too. I don't even know which one this This guy might be Ur I think this guy's the Urban Knight. Yeah, I think he is. It doesn't matter though, he's standing with his back to us. He's pretty much done, right? So the R68. Doesn't have a direct line of sight on anybody, so he can't really do anything. So that's the 59, is it? That's got the mortar? That's the mortar 8 version. Not much armor left in that location. Ha! I'm trying to get my vehicles down as far as they'll go here. You got nothing, you but I can't me? get them as far as I want. Minor damage, Commander. Nothing to see here. They're all gonna fire at the uh, urban mech, though. I'm not hopeful that they'll do any damage, but if we can get a few points in here or there before my mechs get down there, get you next time. it's fine. My vehicles are kind I of in a perfect ya. spot to escort them too. I've got my uh, Zoria behind them, so it'll be moving up into them. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why it's not letting me move further down, but... It keeps telling me that it's, like, beyond the reach of the convoy, but i got a vehicle down there, so I don't know. We hit one of our own guys here, I think. System's recycling for another shot. Yeah, the AMS got all the missiles. Standing by. Gotta get you down as far as we can go. Same thing, gonna tar target that Irby. That's the Urban Knight, I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think this guy ever gets a chance to shoot either. We just we just shred this guy, I think. Locking on target. I'm kinda glad it was Urban Max, the second the second uh unit here. We which is really weird. Commander. I mean at for a three skull. Go why it's Urban Max, I don't know. And drop the mortar on these two guys because they're clustered. Thought about putting it there, but I'm like, I'll do more damage on these two. I gotta fire fight them anyway. I think I switched to normal ammo too. Saving the airburst, because I don't know. Did I go airburst? Oh I did. Tell me what to shoot. Ah, a little bit of damage. Get you down the hill. 
think I might have range of machine guns here. It might not be though. Yeah, we're in range. I think I fired all anyway. Yeah. Gonna burn his AMS. I think we just got the two vehicles left. So we got a prowler. Sleep near the prowler, I, I think, you? left. Or did the prowler already go? Coordinates received. MRM paramediums, not bad. This is all got shot down. Is that it? I'm barely scratched. This AMS is pretty damn good. Yes, Commander. So this is my uh, Viper. I'm gonna move right down into the middle of these guys, so that's why I'm kind of uh, using the resolve so I can get initiative and get out of there. Just in case those two guys up on the hill, I can't remember. I thought maybe one of those guys on the hill had a had a uh, AC-20, which is why I was like moving down real fast. See ya. Got this viper. I think those AP gas rifles have become one of my new favorite weapons, especially when you boat them like that. Right? If you got enough of them. It's so dangerous. I'm liking the lighter mechs with like just piles of weapons now. We're watching a lot of um, MechWare Online videos, and it's I think it's JGX. I think the guy is the guy's name. No, Data. Sorry, D A T A. All spaces. Just restarting the mech here. That's all we can do. And he's been running a piranha with like. Eight heavy machine guns and three micro pulse lasers or some shit like that. that Shut down. Bad hit. Panicked. Yeah, so he's been running a piranha with like all these heavy lasers and he's just like shredding mechs with it. And I'm like, you know, when you think about it, lots of armor. I think this nice is the end try. here. Ha! Send me a real opponent. Yeah. Reporting. We have down yeah. a mech. That was the best scenario that could have happened, him bailing out. Because they were they were just taking his armor apart. Like they were pulling his with the flamers, they were pulling his armor apart. And while they were damaging each other, they were doing more damage to him. You'll see at the end wh what situation he was at. But he was in a, he was in bad shape when he finally uh, bailed out. So he couldn't have bailed out at a better time. If he had stayed another turn, he probably would have lost the whole mech. So, we're gonna try and kill this guy. Oh yeah, that's the old one. The pair of rifles. Medium and light rifle or something. The 6DC, yeah. Connection, that one. I think he goes down pretty quick too. But yeah, so... These lighter mechs, like up to 40 tons, boating like lots of weapons, can be very, very dangerous. Like... That's the MRM-30. I think he only gets one shot off before he dies too. Yes, Commander. But yeah, like you'll see in the next video too with the um, Battle Cobra. Locking in target. Critical hit, Commander. If you're facing heavier mechs, though, it's really not gonna. It doesn't. It won't matter. It, won't really, it doesn't really work, but. Lights against lights, just boating tons of weapons. It's really, the, it's just the best way to go. The more weapons you can cram on something, just get them all on there. If you've got a weapon slot that's not being used, find a way to get it used. Locked on. Because I mean, there's something to be said for using big damage weapons, but early game, it really damage. is volume. You know, you're making up for that one big hit that you might get Good with. To go. Tons of hits that you Commander? you probably more likely can land, or giving you more chances to actually do some kind of damage, you know, the, the best you can. Would you rather have one medium laser or a targeting computer that's going to give you plus one to hit? Well, plus one to hit might only be five percent, but if your chance to hit is fifty, right? Would you rather have six chances at fifty-five percent or seven chances at fifty? I don't know. Orders. Mathematically, I don't know. It might be better to to go with right, the seven Commander. chances at fifty. 
So, I mean, it just it is what it is, right? All weapons are go. Yeah, too bad these urban mechs weren't more exciting. They were just really they were just really matter of time matter of time enemies, right? Moving fast. This guy's in the way that you gotta kinda brush aside. I don't really care if we get our guys here. Oh no, I turned it off this time. Okay. I do care. No retreat. Structure exposed, baby. Commander. Get on him, buddy. I think I moved over here because I want to make sure that uh, the vehicles can move and uh, spot him. Lousy chance to hit, though. Confirmed. One thing I gotta say, I keep forgetting to do with the uh, trebuchet, or not trebuchet, the uh, um, the Clint in this in this match. And way. always, is I keep forgetting to switch between close and, and long range targeting. I think somewhere strike. along here, I remember. Maybe I've already remembered. I can't. Remember, I don't know, but I keep remember. I keep forgetting to switch between the two. Uh, yeah, we get one of our own guys too. There. It's one of those things. Like I said, if I don't have a big red button to push, I'm gonna forget about little details like that. Get up, buddy. Got rid of the MRM. It's pretty much useless now. That's a critical hit. Might have a small laser left. I can't remember. Or a machine gun or something. Yeah, good luck, guys. They're repairing themselves, too. So that's the mortar. We got the R20, or sorry, the uh. Oh, he's got a tag. Is that a tag or a small laser? Might be better for that guy to carry a tag than a small laser. Right here. Trying to figure out who to kill here. Yeah, gonna finish him off, I think. There. Get him, get him away from our front side. Now he's deciding here whether or not. I think before we came down the hill, I was saying, depending on what the lance is here, we were going to race the vehicles to the out point and then get to our extraction point and just get the hell out. But at this point, with these urban mechs being a relatively easy lance to kill, the idea was that we were going to bring all the vehicles down as close to the out point as possible without taking them out, finish off the urban mechs, reposition near where we needed to be extracted, and then move all the vehicles out in one turn. With the idea being that if the lance that we get coming Moving up is an easy lance to kill, we'll, we'll finish them off. But if it's not, then we're in a position to, to just extract and get the hell out. So that was my thought here, which is why we're taking our time down here. We're not really not playing to win. We're just playing around to kill these guys so that we can just uh, set up for the next lance. Because like I said, with the urban mechs, it's just a matter of time, right? There's not a lot to them. Affirmative. If they were newer versions and they had better weapons on them, then, you know, you. like if one of them was an arrow mech and on then it could way. be dangerous, but the MRM-30 was the only one that's really dangerous in this in this fight. I mean, this guy over here has got one of these guys has an AC-20. I think it's this guy here, but he's not in range and he's not really shooting at anybody, so it's not really a threat, right? I mean, he could be, which is why I th 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 put the Thunderbolt on, but... It's not really doing anything at the moment, so. Good to go. Yeah, get Zoria down. Double time. It's the only it's the only unit I'm worried about getting out of here. It's so slow, right? Commencing Alpha Strike. And the mortar. I find the mortar very ineffectual. And it's situational too, right? Because you can't shoot it in close quarters when you have a lot of your own guys around. Especially if it's been a heavy brawl and you've got a couple of open components. The last thing you want to be doing is shooting a mortar off at an enemy when you've got guys around. But with the LRM, you're more apt to do it because there's a lot less chance of the splash affecting your guys. 
Like he could still hit, but there's less splash to worry about, right? Because the mortar damage is pretty much every location. Waiting for orders. So all you need is that one point, you know, to crit you somewhere and you're you're screwed. On my way. But I guess like like anything, I guess in volume the the mortar should be great. Just trying to decide over here to who to finish off first. The mortar guy right now is doing more damage than the AC-20 guy, so I think I'm going to shoot at him. I think we're going to rain it on him. Yeah. Hopefully get do some more damage to that torso. Yeah, we even have a better chance to indirect with this guy. Because I don't think he moved that much. Okay, they're elementals. Standing by. I can't remember if we try to drop some heat here or not. I think I decide against that because I don't want to be shooting past my own guys. Yeah, we're going to sprint it over here. Move Much better chance. And I realized I was targeting the wrong guy. I wanted the other guy, but this guy's fine. We're shooting on his left side too, which is where I think he keeps his ammo on his left side. Oh, maybe he doesn't. I think the uh, Urban Mac, the ammo is in the right torso. The uh, AC-20 ammo, that is. I'm thinking uh, the Hunchback has got the ammo in the left torso. Which is really weird when you think about it. Like, why would you put it in the left torso? I mean, I guess because there's not a lot of room in the right with the AC-20, but... You, you don't really have a side to shield with then to protect yourself when you're taking a lot of damage, right? Waiting for orders. What do you do? Do you turn your weapon side to the enemy or do you turn your ammo side to the enemy? Either one, Location if you lose either, confirmed. you're done. I guess you turn your weapon side so that the ammo cooks off, you don't die, but... I mean, it doesn't really make too much sense. I'm trying to kill this guy. There's the left side. Solid connection on that one. I'm out of long range missiles. Now we're just going to sneak these guys up against the. Uh, I think we decide to get. I, I don't think we can go. We're too far away from the uh, the markers. I can't get around. I can't use them as like I normally would, like a regular mech or vehicle. So we're just going to move them up here. All right? It's going to face towards the urban mech, and then we're going to shoot our guys back here. Might as well. You never know, right? Here we At least go. we make them stand on fire. Take a couple points damage from that. I don't need to have it regenerate, hit. but whatever. And those guys are still taking damage. I think they're slowly regenerating, though. They took a lot from Flamers. Commander? They were shooting each other while they were on my back, so it serves them right. All right, get up here. Nope. Yep. Sprinting. <laughs> I remember that from. The, the nope. Yep. From when we were playing. It's one of those ones. I still get that where you you go to oh, click on one location go. and you move your mouse at the same time and it clicks in a different location because it registers. It has a slow registration, I guess. Waiting for orders. I don't know whether that's just my computer. Or what it is, but that happens a fair bit to me where I go to click in one spot and then it registers elsewhere. Good to go. Because I click and then go to move my mouse, right, and commander. for some reason it doesn't register until my mouse is partway across the screen. Reporting. It's almost like I got to click and pause a lot. Yeah, I'm just figuring out here. I know, I know, I know, I can't go on those uh, triangles. Just trying to figure out where the best attack position is here to minimize my. Uh, ability of being attacked. I'm still worried about that uh, that um, AC-20. Especially if I decide to close, right? Looking at killing this guy if I can, the mortar. 
Once again, he's completely yeah, unstable and didn't fall over, but whatever. Uh, sorry, no, not not this guy. He's almost completely unstable. Not quite. Finish him. Got plenty of ammo left. Just have to kill at this point. Mech destroyed. Don't get much salvage out of that, but it's the last episode, so who cares? I mean, I kind of do. You still want to kind of play, even though like you know you're not going to be playing anymore. You still want to play like you normally would. Or at least I try to do that. Confirm. Fire. Okay. Exposing the structure. Reporting. Critical hit. Yeah, so my peel and stick armor you saw there's regenerating my arm right damage. Here. And yeah, I'm using cheat armor. Cause fuck it. If they're gonna use it, I'm gonna use it. Hopefully I can kill this guy. Just trying to decide whether I want to close. I'm like, can I get this side? Maybe. If I don't get the side, is he gonna kill me? Cool. Maybe. I'm already overheating here, it's an issue. Good chances to hit. And this is where I remember, it's like, oh! Should I be switching this? Like, yeah, maybe I should. I gotta click out to be able to change it over. Change it over, and my percentage chance went up. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool feature, if I remember to use the damn thing. I'm gonna have to put a friggin' sticky note on my monitor. That's got a list of things I need to check before I do anything with a mech. Critical hit, Commander. Have you toggled systems on or off? Yes, Commander. All right, finish this guy off. Affirmative. Have you toggled your systems today? Finish him. So that light rotary rifle, regardless of the recoil, and the, it's got a low jam chance, hasn't jammed yet. Reporting critical. Unlike my match, the last um, inheritance round where my clan rack 5 was jamming, like, every time it would fire, six rounds it would jam. This one, I mean, I've been trying to keep the, uh, the rate of fire low, but I crank it up and it's still not jamming. Good to go. You know, the pilot's got, I think, gunnery 7. Got it. And then I think his, an extra gunnery from his command module, so it's like minus 8%. Firing six rounds is 18, so it's like 10% jam chance. So, I mean, he hasn't jammed yet, although I think my, my jam chance on the uh, Talos in Inheritance was 10% with all my reductions, and I jammed every time. So there must be something I'm not calculating. Roger that. I left the Mortar Redeemed Rockets to save ammo. I have enough. I got enough stuff here to kill this guy without using the uh, mortar ammo. I know I should I should have shift clicked those, but there's the kill. Cool. Now I'm like, all right, well, we know what we got to do. We're gonna leave these guys here. Right, commander. And I'm gonna reposition. I'm pretty sure our out point is to the upper. Upper right. Wait. Yeah, upper right. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. I couldn't remember where the enemy lances come from. Right? I'm like, do they come from the upper right? Or to, to like below us up on the hill? Where we just came yes, from, like the on, lower left here? I couldn't remember. And I, but I was pretty sure our extraction is the upper right, and they come from the upper right. So I'm setting up here... To position myself in trees with my mechs and in the open with my vehicles as far up the hill as I can go so that when I do move these guys out next turn that um, my mechs are protected, my vehicles are the target in case whatever shows up is going to be shooting at us, right? So that there's a the chance that they'll just go after the vehicles uh, and we're in a position to go up the hill and get out. For orders. That was a goal, anyway. 
This is the Zoria trying to figure out. I'm like, nah, just fuck it. Got to get up the hill here. That's where we got to go. So let's get up as far as we can go here. It doesn't do very well over rough terrain. So the Zoria movement is terrible in, in, in itself. You need to really have a pilot that's got the um, Affirmative. really high piloting skill to give it bonus movement. Sounds smart. Because it doesn't Pulling. go very, very far. Commander. I mean, the speed's okay. Testing I think it's like five eight, but. That vehicle doesn't handle terrain very well, so it is this one. It's got to go over rough terrain. It's wheeled. It's not a very good. Uh, Awaiting orders. Not a good, very, very good vehicle for that. All right, so now we're set up. Ten four. All right, let's do this. I think I reserve my max vehicles after these elementals move. I want to reserve here. Until we move one of the vehicles out. Now I'm going to angle them back facing towards the... Yeah, this way. Alright, so I was right. Yeah. The reserve... Uh, the reinforcement latch is up on the hill. Looks like they got elementals already. Hooray for that. Which is bad because it could cut off my, my escape, right? I may end up being up on the hill with toadies. Alright, so what do we got? What else do we got up here? So I want to get up here as fast as I can. I know I can get the vehicles out at one turn. And I'm thinking here, once like once the vehicles are out, we're gone. But they gotta leave first, which means they leave next turn, not this turn. So I got this turn and next turn to fight. Before I can leave. So they got a solitaire couple of rippers, two elementals. I'm gonna try to pull the rippers down, I think, because they got bomb racks, right? They got the speed, a couple of hits. They got some damage with those bomb racks. Standing by. We're just gonna get up the hill as fast as we can. Just stay away from the flank. Don't give them open access to us. Gotta make sure if those elementals have flamers that they don't, they're not, uh, they don't have a direct line of sight. Got our heat drops. We're able to fire everything here. Roger that. Couple more hits. Nice. Stripping armor. Waiting for orders. Okay, that's the LRM version. I think we're gonna try and shoot the chopper. I think we just do a check here. Far rippers 10%. These guys are 0 0.9. 54. Yeah, that guy. You never know, right? We got a hit. There you go. Now if that was my vehicle, it wouldn't happen, but you know, I'll take that hit. I don't know if I fire the large lasers here. Because like right through all my guys, I'm like, no, nah, fuck that shit. That's like a recipe for disaster. I think it's like something, yeah, there's like no reason. I'm just, I'm guaranteed a back hit at that one, so I was like, forget it. Alright. Get up this Amanda. damn hill. Try to move to a position that'll, at least the, if the elementals see him, they'll go after him rather than uh, the mechs, hopefully. Understood. Moving forward. I think we're going to try and bring this chopper down. One hit. Firing. Gotta get the Zoria up here. I think we use airburst on this one. Finally got a chance to use airburst on proper uh, targets. There it is. Even though the, the LBX has got a better chance to hit than the airburst for some reason, but whatever. Firing everything I've got. But the airburst gets the kill. That's all that matters. I think it's got a better chance to hit the rotors That's too, the right? Kill. Which is why it's... Uh, so deadly against um, flyers. I think we want to try and get this other flyer. So I'm not mistaken, it's got a bomb rack as well. Yeah. We got the ammo, so I think we take a shot anyway. The APs. Don't want to overheat myself. Yeah, three points. That's why I didn't fire the uh, heavies. And our last vehicle. 
Excellent. Affirmative. Well, almost done. So there's our dropship. Now we just gotta wait this turn. They leave at the end of the turn, then we can get the hell out of here. So technically we've got this turn and next turn to survive. We got two sets of elementals up here. We've already seen what they can do. Orders. So we gotta be like, all right, let's make sure we don't get to a position where they can jump on us. I should have been more aware here. Like, what if these guys are flamer units? Like, if that guy's a flamer unit, am I in range? But I should have been thinking of right. But I wasn't. I was just thinking, let's kill this ripper. Taking the shot. There's the kill. I was actually shocked, That's I didn't think that was going to happen, but for some reason, um, Smirk really likes that uh, light rotary rifle. Right it here. seems to hit a half decent amount, so now I'm just deciding what am I going to kill here. I'm going to try and kill the mech, I think. We're going to move over here. I think I'm aware, though, no, like i got to be that. careful of how much heat I use, because i got to be able to move to our outpoint once it reveals itself. Yeah, so I just turn off those so I, do, I don't go over and heat. Yeah, well. Comes the toadies. Moving over that way for some reason. Which is good for us, anyway. Waiting for orders. Maybe it's because he's aware that we killed two choppers already. I don't know. I don't want to move him too far off to the one side because he's already slow. So I'm like, if I stay here, he'll be able to get out next turn. Firing on target. That's why I did that. He's got very little um, evasion right now, but still, it's like he's in a good spot. Those guys are moving forward. So this is when I discovered a little icon down here at the bottom. Resupply. Like, I've never seen that before. I don't know what the hell that... So I'm like, what the hell is resupply? I click on it, I'm like... I didn't... I, I, so you you can click on a unit to resupply, right? I'm like, can I click on these guys? I'm like, no, because I didn't see the circle at first, right? It was a yellow circle. So apparently, if I'm inside that yellow circle, I can resu resupply a unit. Now, I don't know if that reloads all the ammo, or what that does. I have no idea. I have no ability to test it at this in this match. But I will be testing it in the next series for sure. Because that's pretty cool, that, that resupply function. And I don't know whether it's... You have to, like, it would be good to use up all your Firing ammo, if you could, before you get to that point, and then have the vehicle pull in there and resupply your mechs for, another shot. for the last fight, for so you wouldn't have to worry too much about ammo. But I'm wondering if that's why that's there. So if you're, for those engagements where you're, like, Commander? doing the five skull version and you're facing, like, five lances in total, like, good two lances now. at the head or three lances it. at the head, and then two more lances later on, that you have the opportunity to resupply yourself before you face the final lance. I don't know. Or it gives you an incentive to get there before you kill the second to last lance to resupply your guys to be able to fight the last two lances. I don't know. It's a nice little feature though. So that guy's moved forward. I think he's trying to get Good a shot go. at the vehicles down below. Sounds smart. Cooling. Receiving you. Very fortunate that these guys didn't decide not to just attack my mech straight out. It's been very quiet for, from them at the top here, but I'm going all out in this guy because I want to try and kill him before we leave. A little bit of damage. I'm here. Get you over there. Same thing. Unload everything. That's actually pretty good damage for that chance to hit. And there it is, and we were right in the actual hex to get out. Now, I didn't think I was that close. I thought it was actually further past the, the uh, solitaire that I had to go. But I wasn't 100% sure. But it just as it, as it so stands, I got three, got three of my guys in the outpoint already, which is nice. I don't have to fight these toadies. I mean, I could have stuck around and tried to kill the toadies. And if it wasn't... Um, like I said, if it wasn't a series, 
Yeah, see, he's already doing damage to me, and he's connecting a fair amount. There's no point. I mean, they would just kill me. I can't take much more. Yikes! That Which is, is another reason why I think the the elementals are a little OP. There really isn't a hard counter to them, except for speed. You know. On my way. So once my last mechs into this in this hex, we're gone. So I'm trying to kill this guy before we leave. And I mistakenly try an OP in the CT, trying to get a kill here. You can see how well that went. Fucking oh. I swear to God, I should have just shot. I get so tired of, like, trying to offensive push and then never hitting anything. Never hitting what I want. I'm just better off shooting, you know? And I'm just being punished for it. That's why I gotta go. I lost a weapon. The vehicle lost the MG. Awaiting orders. All right. Moving to position. Hammer him. Firing all weapons. structure. We're in a good position to kill this guy. But my problem is, is the guy I want to use to kill him with. As soon as I move into the hex, I can't. Like, will he'll be leaving? So he, that guy's like, go. he can't fire. So this is my last chance, really, right here. Last chance to hit with the cluster and the mortar. I went all out with the mortar anyway. I think we were going we to hit our own guy, but I thought, you never know. Because his CT is almost done, right? We almost had him. Standing by. We got this guy next. Got to do a front shot. Get close with the machine guns. Surely, I can get this guy, right? Crank it all the way up to the top. Surely, we should be able to kill him with this, right? I call him. Nope, didn't even hit the CT. Highest percentage chance to hit this the CT. Couldn't even do it. Now, that's when I realized I can't kill this guy because as soon as I move in there, we're leaving. Confirmed. Anyway, we tried. We almost got him. And that, as they say, is that. Mission successful. Well, 666,000 we made, which ain't, which ain't bad. Devil's number. I mean, and change. But not bad. Could have been worse. Yeah, so the waiver, I mean, we got lucky we bailed out. We lost a few components. But nothing that we can't replace. I think we, I don't know if we have a clan active probe. We might. I think we, I think I double check what we have here. So, yeah, it says in the corner here. So we can replace the fire control system standard cockpit. We can replace. We don't have any of those, but we do have tracker sensors that we can replace. But the the real issue was it. I mean, if he hadn't have bailed out, right? We were a regular XL engine. So if he killed the CT, right? We would have lost everything in the CT, including an LRM-15 clan that I don't have to replace it with. We have a clan XL, so we'd be able to replace the XL with a clan XL to upgrade it, right? But like I said, the, the, the clan LRM-15 is in the CT. We would have lost that for sure. We don't have a replacement. So it would have, the Waverin would have been a complete rebuild if he hadn't have bailed out. So, I mean, that was the best scenario for him is bailing out, right? I don't know what I would have done if I had if I had the ability to control him being able to bail out or not. I mean, all I could do is restart, right? So, but the Viper got four kills. That's pretty brutal. That thing, that mech. If I had like three of those mechs, that would be just like OP. I think they don't do a lot of. They don't. They seem like they don't do a lot of damage, but the uh, AP Gosses do a lot of um, instability. So now for um, storage here. We don't have a lot. We haven't gone that far in the series, so we didn't have too much. No fire moss, no rippers. We had two stormcrow parts. I'm pretty sure that's what I did is I take the stormcrow pieces here. Just so we can put it together to see. And I can't remember what else I grabbed here. I mean, that's that's like the best choice, right? I don't know what else, what else you would choose out of that. 
Because I think we have everything else. We got Endo, we got Pharaoh. I grabbed the Clan XL because why not? What else did we grab? I should have grabbed... Why oh, I put it back, eh? Oh. I think I should have... I mean, if, if I was going to continue... Oh yeah, that's right. I grabbed the LRM-20 just in case the uh, Stormcrow didn't have any on it. 330 core, which I believe... Yeah, the 330 core is in the Stormcrow. Should have grabbed the Guardian ECM, though. Because we lost the Beagle Pro. I think that would have been a good replacement. But I think I grabbed that, though. I think I end up with the heatsink kit. That is one thing that I think this playthrough was lacking was a lot of double heatsink kits. We were struggling to get all, all the ones that we needed. Some piloting support, which isn't bad, but I mean... They're hard to find, but I mean, does it does it really tip the mech over and, and scale in anything? Not really. Plus one piloting doesn't really give you too much. A little bit more balance, maybe, but... I think that's probably pretty good. Yeah, we didn't get much in the uh, in the draw here. A lot of the stuff we already had, so twenty heat sinks end up being what? Look at this, fifty two hundred. Was it twenty or twelve? Might have been twelve. Either way, it wasn't very much. The rest of the stuff we would have just normally kept. Bottle of leader ammo for sure. Keep it. Yeah, not bad. Although the follow the leader ammo wouldn't have applied in the new version because I think for a clan LRM, I think it's got specific clan ammo for the LRMs, so I think I'm just checking the uh, how long it takes to get stuff back. Yeah, Wavering's 27 days to repair. Is it 27? It's hard to read. It's on a it's small screen for me while I'm looking at it right now. Welcome to the I think I assembled a Stormcrow here too just to see what we got out of it. Now, wait. Um... I can go back, but you can't. I want to see what the... Uh, there it is there. For me, i got to make the screen bigger. Hang on one second here. So you're seeing a full screen, but I'm not. All right, so limb repair is 33. 50% chance for item recovery. And 25% chance for base repair. So... If I... Uh, for me, if I hit play again... Um, that neck you asked for yeah, we got we got shafted on this. You'll see here in a second. I'm just trying to decide which one's better, the LRM20 version or the LRM15s with uh, large and medium laser. I go for the laser version. 20's not bad, but you're, you're into dedicated launchers at that point, right? Which we don't really have. So I was hoping I could get a pair of 15s or something out of it. Check this out in a second here. I think it's probably because I used the lower of the two um, initial parts is why it ended up being so bad. We get nothing out of this. But you see this. This is brutal. Right? It's probably because I used one part and then two parts from the other ones, which is why it ended up with nothing in this. Which is fine. I mean, still, it's actually... It's like what 32 days and 712,000 which isn't a lot to repair this mech and this thing is damn good if you look at it like it's fast it's like a it's a 6-9 movement you could technically put an ultra 20 in it right it's like super fast really good armor this would have been a really great um, mech to add to our unit you know so I mean, yeah, you don't have the arm actuators. I don't think we had any either. But still, we would eventually find some that we can put in to make the arms more accurate. But this thing has got 17 hard points. So if you wanted, if you had 17 AP Gauss rifles, you could put 17 AP Gauss rifles in there. That's only 8.5 tons, right? Because they're a half ton each. Then put in like, I don't know, 4 or 5 tons of ammo. And it's still underweight. Then you just figure out what you want to do with the rest of it, right? Probably need to put a few... You might need it. I don't know if you'd need heat sinks. 17 at 2 heat each, 34. No, you wouldn't. Put in a couple backup weapons, like a couple of lasers. That thing would just be... Could you imagine how brutal that would be? I mean, you couldn't put two lasers in. You'd take two of the uh, AP Gauss rifles out, but... Put in, like, you know, some stealth armor or something, and 
Like, it would be just devastating since the Gauss ammo itself doesn't explode. You know? You could just put stealth armor in it. And it would just be totally, totally brutal. But that's this guy. Anyways, that's going to be the end of the series. Um, hope you enjoyed that last episode. It was a little bit better fight than the uh, um, Inheritance one. Um, those elementals really threw me for a loop there. They did, a, they did a number on me. That was actually pretty impressive. I gotta say, as much as I hate elementals, fair play to them. That was, you know, I have, I have no complaints about that. That was, that was fair. So, um, yeah, but I'm going to end the series here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the Duelist. That's coming up uh, probably tomorrow. Um, there's a couple battles in that one, so you might enjoy them. Um, short fights, but interesting fights. Um, yeah, so I end it, end it here. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe, and you can drop your comments in the comment section down below. Until next time, we'll see you later.